Hey kids, welcome back to Let's Play SimCity 4 uh, with a new episode. Last episode we transformed the farming village of Plantation Bay into this small industrial town. Uh, in this episode uh, I think we're going to try and expand the city more. Uh, and uh, one of the things that we did last episode is we created a city that makes a lot of money and we're going to try and find the most effective ways to spend that money and maybe give our our sims, our, our inhabitants, a, a little bit of better quality of life. So uh, let's take a look at our demand and what 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 uh, uh, what zones we have demand for. I'd say that uh, considering that we don't really have anywhere to expand this industrial area for now, uh, I'd say that the best thing we can do is uh, give give our uh, is build build more residential areas. So uh, rather than expand into this uh, agricultural land for now, I think we're going to I think we're going to build we're going to start building a residential area on the other side of this river here. Uh, and the cheapest way for us to do that is going to be to use f a ferry. A ferry is going to be cheaper than a bridge. And it's probably also going to allow us to direct traffic uh, in a more effective way. So I think we're going to start by building a car and passenger ferry. All right, and we're going to we're going to want to build the other end of this ferry link uh, as close to employment as we can. So maybe I'll just stick it here. Now it's going to delete a couple factories, but so be it. And. We're going to connect this to the road network. Uh, we actually need this to be roads. There we go. Okay. So that's going to allow that's going to allow residents from from this area to to uh, to travel directly to where they're going to be working. And we will see, the thing is when we're building ferries like this, we need to kind of keep an eye on on uh, the capacity of this ferry. And if it starts to get over capacity or if the road network on the other end starts to get over capacity, then, then uh, that'll be the kind of the limit of what this ferry, ferry link can support in terms of population commuting to work. So, I've got to I've got to give this power and so let's take power line like this maybe like this and we're gonna have to give it water as well so let's zoom out and we'll just take that and run it across the river so we have this kind of underwater underwater pipeline carrying water to to these folks and I'm realizing now that in the last episode we also ran out of power capacity. Yeah, we are at the very limit, so we are also going to need to build a new power plant. Better do that before I forget, otherwise we're going to run into real problems. Uh, so I think we'll just build another coal plant for now. There we go. And it's fully funded, so now we've just doubled our we've doubled our power capacity. And I want to build I want I want to build a residential area that is as close as possible to this ferry link, so that we're not we're not having Sims drive very far. So I'll just start with that. That's that should add some. We're gonna try and try and use this industrial zone. We have it fill out as much as possible. So I think let's just double check the water here. Yeah, let's do that. I think that should be good. And let's see if that if that uses up the demand that we have. Yeah, so right away the in industry is kind of filling out. We're getting a little bit of residential zones building up here. Maybe we'll maybe we'll build a couple of roads here and just again kind of zone this. 
and we'll see how, how successful that is. I think we need, there we go. So we've got this kind of town or neighborhood on the other side of the river. Yeah, I think we need, we need more water. Yeah, we are running out of water. Where is, where is my water plant? If you lose track of where your water plant is, you can use this water view here and it will, it will kind of make it bright green. Uh, is it polluted or is it at capacity? Not well, kind of both to be honest, but yeah, it's at capacity. So let's just drop another one. You know what? Why don't we actually put the water over here so that we're not, so that we're not, uh, it's actually an unpolluted source of water. So we can actually pump water from the other side of the river. All right, there we go. So we've kind of got this little little town here. Now before before I build this anymore, I want to get a sense of how much this ferry is being used. Okay, so. And then let's take a look at traffic. We can use the volume view. Now, now you're going to notice that this is different from vanilla, and that's because I'm using the network add-on mod or the, the NAM. Uh, and uh, and so this is not that your normal your normal vanilla data view. Uh, as I said, I think in the first video, I would not recommend playing this game without using that mod. Uh, the the NAM NAM network add-on mod, whatever you want to call it, is very very easy to install. It's probably easier to install than any other mod. And if you're going to be playing SimCity 4, you just there's a link. I believe there's a link in the description um, to. Uh, to download it. Uh, it has an installer. Uh, it's also available if you're playing on a Mac or a PC. You can get different versions of it. So uh, definitely, like as soon as you install the game, just install the NAM and and start working with that. Uh, you don't even you don't really have to understand totally how it how it works. You don't have to use every feature of it. But I I really wouldn't recommend playing the game without it. Uh, it it opens up. Uh, it opens up a huge amount of possibilities and allows you to build bigger cities and different types of transit and stuff like that. And yeah, so I would I would highly recommend using it. Now what we can do is we can get a sense of, if we click on one of these, so we can see that they're driving to this, to this um, ferry dock. They're taking the ferry here and then they're driving to work. So we can see that they're, they're not traveling too far, I don't think. Let's see if I can get a sense of the capacity of the ferry. Yeah, so we can see that already with just this small amount, uh, the, the ferry is, is uh, you know, it's a pretty busy ferry line. Let's, let's, sort, of, let's sort of push this to the limit and, and see how much how much, uh, okay, is this, this is one, two, three, four, five, yeah, let's just extend that out like that. Let's kind of see how much this one ferry dock can support in terms of, in terms of residential zones. No, we don't really have a lot of demand, do we? Yeah, it looks like looks like we've hit the limit of our industrial demand for sure. I just want to see if this zone is actually developing. Oops. I want to see if this zone is actually developing kind of at, at the density that we want it to. Okay, so I think that's that's about it in terms of how much this industrial zone can support. So maybe we can scale back. Well, I guess we'll just leave that there and it'll build up. It'll build when it builds. But looks like we've looks like we've hit. Yeah, we need more more workplaces there. All right, we've also got uh, lots of money, as I previously mentioned. What's what is costing us? I think it's mostly yeah, it's mostly that power plant that's costing us. And how much of the capacity are we actually using? Yeah, so we've got lots of spare spare capacity there, which is fine. And we've got lots of money, so I think we should start providing our sims with with some amenities. So we've got a fire station, which is usually probably in a lot of ways the first the first amenity you're gonna you're gonna uh, give them. I'll notice this fire station isn't actually covering the entire 
city. So maybe we can start by kind of upgrading the fire station with a, with a bigger one. Large fire station. Okay, I'm going to build it here so that we can eventually expand outward into this area. Um, yeah, that's that looks good. There we go. And then I think the next thing we can do, we could give them a police station, but let's see what they want. Water full of filth, no hospitals, lacking in lifespan. Uh, and we can, yeah, maybe let's we'll start by giving them uh, a hospital. Now, if you look at the monthly cost of the hospital, if we build a large medical center, it could probably use up all of our uh, our budget. So maybe I'll start by building a medical clinic. And I'm going to put the clinic maybe here. And then if I let this tick, let's just take a look at its capacity. So local ambulance funding, local funding. Let's put the funding to max. Now that patient capacity is probably going to fill up right away. Oh, wait. We gotta, we gotta let it tick a little bit longer too. Okay, yeah, so right away we, we have like almost double the number of patients that we have in terms of patient capacity. So one thing I can do, uh, we still have a little bit of income to spare here, so what I can do is I can, I can lower the ambulance funding. Uh, and this is kind of uh, an important thing to keep in mind when your city is young is that if you're gonna start providing something like healthcare, um, you, you don't need to give it to everyone. Uh, you're, you know, again, we're kind of building this sort of Victorian style city with the dirty industry right up next to the residential areas. Uh, and we don't need a city that's like a paradise. We need a city that makes money and that has some wealth. Uh, and, but we, do, we don't need, we don't need to have a city that is, you know, totally equitable for everyone. Uh, in fact, it's it's you know you can really slow the development of the city uh, if you try and offer too many services too quickly. So, really, what we're doing here is we're kind of selectively providing healthcare, uh, and that's going to give us money to also kind of selectively provide the next amenity, which is going to be education. So, let's build a school right here, and we'll use the same kind of tool where we're going to put the bus funding right down to zero, and we're going to increase the funding and. We're still within our budget. Yeah, so we can actually increase the bus funding just a bit. Bus funding is also very expensive, so we don't want to provide bus funding like all over town. There we go. All right, so we've provided all that. What can we do? What else can we do? We can look at some of our rewards maybe. University is very expensive. Um, it's fairly expensive, yeah, but we could do that. The radio station is good for commercial areas, but uh, we don't really have much commercial activity for the time being. And we have the mayor's house. So we could build the mayor's house. Maybe we'll put it here on the edge of town for now and uh, and we can we can sort of grow the city outward just for fun um, and then we could also build some parks do they want parks yeah see we need trees we need parks all that so why don't I why don't I throw a park in this little tile that's sort of not used and then I could also consider one thing to keep in mind when you're building parks is you've got all these choices all these choices, uh, some of which are, like if you look at the monthly cost, the small plaza is 10, the skateboard park is 25 per month. Uh, this, this guy, open grass area, is, is 5 per month. And one of the cool things about these open grass areas, so let's say, why don't I create a little cordon here behind, this is sort of our main street of this small, small city. If I build a little cordon of, part of open grass areas here, this could be sort of like almost a little green belt uh, between the the residential area and the employment area. And the cool thing about these open grass areas is you can actually plant trees on them. So if I go here, I've got some custom tree mods in here, but I'm just going to use the vanilla ones. Let's take, I don't know, let's take the maple trees. 
we can actually drop trees, maybe a row of trees uh, along this little cordon of, of grass. So don't forget about those open grass areas. You can make really interesting custom parks. Uh, whereas if I look at the one that I built, where did I build it? It's over by the school here. This is kind of the, um, the default park. Um, and, but you can, you can sort of customize that by, by putting trees and, and eventually other things on this open grass and kind of make the park look the way that you want it to look. So I find that that's a fun, a fun way to, uh, to approach parks. And they're also, they, you get a lot of sort of bang for your buck. Oh, there we go, we got, a, we got a statue and another cemetery. I think we're gonna build the cemetery up here. Maybe we'll do this and we'll provide a little road access. Hmm, so I remember asking last episode, I think that the, I thought that the number of graves grew over time in the cemetery, but maybe it's when you get the later cemeteries. Again, I'm going to keep an eye on this because that, I'm not sure if that's true or not. It might be. Um, but, uh, but this cemetery, you can see, has a lot more, a lot more graves in it and these kind of, wait, let's zoom in. We've got, we've got like headstones and then we've also got these kind of bigger crypts and stuff, so it's kind of neat. I'm sure you can download all sorts of mods to get, uh, you know, interesting graveyards and stuff. Someone's got to have made something like that. All right, and that's because we have we have now two churches and the two graveyards on the edge of town. As soon as I build those parks, some of this seems to be redeveloping. I don't know if it's just going to redevelop. Yeah, it's just, they're just going to build the same buildings, but it's definitely kind of provided a little bit of relief. Um, all right, so we're 17 years into the city, and we're up to 21,000. So let's see here. One thing, so we've built a school, and we're providing education to, I guess, sort of one neighborhood of the city. Let's adjust that a bit, broaden it a bit. Um, and the thing about education is education takes time. Uh, so by building a school, you don't immediately change the level of education. Okay, let's just zoom this back to 10 years. So you can see this was what was happening with education before, and now we can see it kind of creeping up because we've built that school. And I don't know, at some point it will kind of plateau, but, and this is this will be the average, I guess, education score or IQ or whatever you want to call it of, uh, of the Sims in town. But you can see as with every month passing, it's, it's increasing. So the effects of that, if we look at demand here, uh, the effects of that is that the demand for dirty industry is going to go down and the demand for manufacturing industry and commercial uh, more sort of highly skilled labor is going to is going to go up so well just it's kind of good to get your education going early because it's it's going to take some time before it actually settles in so while we wait for education to pick up and we can see I don't know is that at capacity or is it just yeah this is this is not actually a percentage of the capacity this is just a an absolute number so it doesn't tell us the capacity here although I could look it up but this service quality will start to go down if these if these ferry terminals get get kind of oversaturated we don't have any congestion yet, and that's part of partly because I'm using the NAM and I've, I've increased the capacity of roadways to make them a little bit more realistic, so we're not going to have huge transit issues. Uh, the one thing I want to do as well, another service I want to offer is I want I want this to to be a kind of uh, you know I said I said I was going to kind of take a historical approach, so I want this to be kind of a transit-oriented city, uh, and I haven't built any busing yet. So I think this is a good time to start to provide a rudimentary bus network so that uh, our sims are not just driving everywhere. So I'm going to start by placing, uh, it's really important to have bus links at the ferry so that people can actually get, get uh, they can use the bus to, to get to uh, the ferry and to, to get to work. So let's put some bus links in. That's important. Uh, maybe we'll we'll place some along this. Um, we want to place some intersections for sure. So maybe we'll place some along this kind of main drag here. And then uh, one thing you can keep in mind is that in this game, Sims will walk. I would say about six to eight tiles. I don't know what the maximum is. You can you can look it up easily. But uh, Sims will walk about eight tiles 
uh, six or eight tiles. So you, when you're placing your transit, if you're if you're imagining that people are going to walk to the bus, take the bus, get off the bus at the other end, and walk, you want kind of every every residence and every workplace to be within six or eight tiles of of a bus station, of a bus stop. So I can put one here as well. Uh, now we're going to have to fix fix up these zones a bit because the the arrow is is not facing a road. I think that's good. Did I miss anything? Put one there. That's good. And I put one there. And we probably want to. Oh, we've got a bus stop there. Maybe we'll put one down here. And they'll, that'll start to get at some of the uh, some of the poorer Sims, especially, are going to prefer taking the bus. Yeah, we can see that, that they'll slowly start to use that capacity, uh, especially as I build more bus stops. The more bus stops you build, the more buses they'll use. Um, and we can look at. We can look at, um, in the graphs area here, commute, no, there's commute time, and then there's traffic volume, there we go. So you can see we didn't have buses before, and we've just, this has just gone up. Yeah, so you can see in this city, in fact, in terms of how people are getting around, a lot of them are walking, and that's because it's a pretty small city. So as I said, you know, they're willing to walk, they're willing to walk about eight tiles. And uh, and there's there's a fair number of people. I would say all these people are kind of living within walking distance of where they're likely working. Uh, so you've got a pretty high pedestrian score here. As the buses have gone up, the number of people who are driving has gone down. And this is the ferry that I built. And you've got a huge number of people using the ferry to get to and from work. Uh, I can also use this is the the query view gives me information on a on a particular building. Uh, the, what is this one called? Root Query is one of the best features of, of SimCity 4 and that's where I'm going to click. Let's say I want to see how this what, how these people are getting to work. So you've got uh, you've got 61 residents in this apartment block. Let's zoom in. You've got 61 residents in this apartment block. 21 of them are driving to work and 40 of them are taking the bus. Uh, so you can see that they're walking all the way down to this bus stop. So that's you know that's a fair number of tiles, probably like nine tiles or something. And then they're hopping on the bus. They're taking the bus one stop down here, and then they're walking to to uh, a factory to work. So we, if we go here, well, they're actually driving like less than a block to get to work, which is kind of hilarious. But and then these ones are these ones are walking. Uh, and here, if we click on a workplace, we can see where the workers are coming from. And so this, this kind of, what is this? What is this here? This is a yeah, small shops. These small shops here, we've got people taking the bus from here. We've got uh, pedestrians walking to the bus. We've got people driving. Uh, so we've got a mix here. And what does it say? Commuters, three pedestrians. Those are people who are walking directly from there. Uh, five people are driving and 87 people are taking the bus. Because a lot of our city is poor, they're going to overwhelmingly prefer taking the bus because, you know, when you're poor, who can afford a car when you're poor? Right? Okay. So, we still need more places to work. And I think... Got to think about where we want to expand. I think we're maybe going to expand industry maybe along the waterfront here and we're going to start to eat into some of this eat into some of this um, uh, farming area and we're probably going to actually just change that to to um, industry as well I don't think that residential zone is really all that useful um, especially because you know we're providing the, the health and health and medical services up here and these guys are kind of out of all that radius so maybe I'll take this to build a, a road across that area and we will expand. I want to build that road there because I want the people who are using this ferry to have a kind of straight shot to get to work. Alright, let's take the dezoning tool. We're going to dezone all that. Dezoning, if you're using streets, dezoning will also delete streets. And I'm going to just keep going with dense, dense industry. I think all this is dense, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So let's just do that and we'll see how that builds. And then let's build a couple of bus stops. 
All right, and we need water. And at this point, we're really not going to be not going to be uh, an agricultural city anymore as we start to eat into these agricultural zones. All right, so that's eaten up all of our demand for industry. How's our budget looking? We got lots of money. Maybe we can expand this area here, uh, and as I said, we'll sort of try and see what the limits of this ferry service, the potential for the ferry service to ferry people across this uh, this river. Okay, oh we don't have any buses, oh yeah we've got one bus stop there, okay that's fine for now. Sort of a bus stop every two blocks I guess. Alright, we're going to need some more commercial areas soon. This zone, oh yeah, this zone is still not quite totally built out. Uh, we're still looking at buses. Oh, I'm starting to see congestion on this road, so very soon, if this becomes congested, uh, very soon we're going to be at the limit of how many people we can we can get take across this this river by ferry and we're gonna need to build a bridge or you know another kind of link and I think yeah I think that if we expand this neighborhood here anymore we are gonna hit the absolute limit of what we can what we can provide now you'll see that the our education investment has paid off uh, they now have too much uh, dirty industry and are asking for are asking for some um, some manufacturing industry so, uh, one of the things I could do is maybe, if I delete some of this, I'm going to see if it will be replaced by manufacturing industry. Uh, what, what would be a good area to do that in? Um, maybe here, close to, the, close to the residences. Let's just see what happens if we delete those factories. There we go. So, I believe... Oh, that one's dirty, isn't it? Yeah, dirty. That's manufacturing, though. Okay, and that's dirty again, so we've managed to get a little bit in there. If we delete too much, um, we're just going to... people just won't have jobs, so... I don't know if that's... yep, that's manufacturing. We have a big demand for that. So I would, st I would focus on just sort of very slowly and gradually deleting the buildings, the dirty buildings that are closest to our residence. And we'll keep this waterfront area dirty. There we go. Uh, that's dirty again. So there's a limit to how much we're going to be able to convince them to build. So we've deleted too much dirty and they're starting to build dirty again. The thing is that manufacturing, the, the, the um, higher level jobs uh, don't like to be built close to the dirties. So, so we end up with this kind of catch-22, whereas if we delete uh, dirty, manufacturing isn't isn't very quick to 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 show up where there's already dirty industry. Um, so I think if we really want to uh, if we really want to kind of discourage the kind of dirty industry that we have, I think that we're going to have to uh, build more education, and we have the money to do it. We've got lots of extra money, so maybe we'll start by building another small school just so that we know we can kind of manage it start building a small school here and maybe we'll give them some health care too I think we can afford yeah we can afford a small a small clinic again just using the minimum radius so we're kinda of selectively providing education
And we can see some of these nicer buildings have started to build here. This area here is actually quite likely to become a, a wealthier area because it's it's not being affected by any of this pollution. So, yeah, we've also got that water water problem for sure. Uh, so we, we can also think about whether we want to be spending some of this money to, to deal with that. And I think we will. I think it's a good a good time to consider building building some more well sorry cleaning up our water so maybe I'll just kind of prepare a zone here yeah see this is quite a large structure stop here and let's take a look at water pollution should have looked at this before uh, oh wait I don't think I've plugged that into the water network yeah there we go and now we're gonna see how that affects our water pollution part of the water pollution is actually coming from farms so yeah that's it's just it it really has not taken much of a dent although it, do, it does have an effect it does have an effect so it is it is going to be doing some work to clean to clean our water and that's pushed our budget quite close to its limit At this point though I'm just like swimming in cash so definitely worth investing in various areas and that this these are good too these water um, what are they called uh, water treatment plants uh, because they also they also serve to kind of create a buffer zone between the your residential areas and your industry so I think we're gonna start uh, expanding the city to the north a bit because again we've we've reached the limit of how many people we can have ferrying across this river in this little burg over here so I think we'll just start expanding in the north the okay one two three four five six seven Uh, I probably need to, yeah, let's build some more bus stops, maybe here, and so I'm still going with this kind of haphazard grid zoning pattern. Kind of expanding the city outward. Uh, as, as the residential areas get further and further from places of work, we're also going to have issues in terms of road transportation. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Oh, I think we need water up here. Yeah, we need water. I'm, I'm building uh, medium density. Uh, sort of again with the mentality that this is a sort of 19th or early 20th century city that's primarily kind of a transit. Oops primarily kind of a transit dominated city all right okay we've we've used up all that capacity uh, and we've got a healthy demand for medium industry let's take a look at we're still in pretty good shape in terms of the road's capacity to take people to work. Uh, I've got kind of a main street here where I built that little commercial strip. And I kind of want to have, I'm kind of thinking at this point it might be nice to have a kind of main north-south artery. So maybe we'll go with this road here. 
and you'll notice that I've most of the most of my streets are are these lower capacity streets. Uh, traffic also moves slower on those streets, so by by building a road here, a higher capacity road, uh, I'm also going to kind of channel the traffic along one corridor, uh, and that is particularly good because it's going to allow me to. Um, well, I'm kind of trying to stick traffic in certain areas, uh, so here I'm going to. I'm going to uh, build a commercial zone along that area. So we'll have a kind of main north-south artery. Oops. And I'm going to build medium density commercial and try and get these rows of shops like we have here. Um, all right, maybe like that. No, that's not what I want. Oh, there we go. Perfect. And let's see if we can fill up these spots. There we go. And, oh yeah, we've got these zones here that aren't, you can see the arrow is not facing, uh, the arrow is not facing, facing a street. They need to have frontage on a mode of transportation. No. these guys as well. So we're starting to see a hierarchy of, uh, of streets appear. With, uh, with um, busier, higher capacity roads, uh, and these kind of residential streets where where the res residential zones have frontage on these residential streets and and the commercial areas have frontage on these these higher streets and I'm sort of going with a you know an early 20th century kind of main street approach to this I think one of the things that's probably going to happen is we're probably going to use up the capacity of these this school here oh We'll see. Maybe we can increase the bus funding just a bit. Starting to get a little variety in terms of the residential. Um, so we can see, we can see here, oops. Like some of these buildings. And this is one of the most interesting things about SimCity 4 is this is, you know, this is your poor working class housing. Uh, this here is a high wealth, is high wealth housing, but you can see, well, it's not, it's not, it's not fully occupied. And so when buildings aren't fully occupied, they get this kind of, this, they get covered in this kind of gray soot kind of thing as though the building's a bit, little bit neglected. What we'll also see is if we, if we have a bunch of buildings that, um, that are high wealth buildings that build, but they're not they're not inhabited by high wealth residents. Uh, then uh, you'll see not only will the density increase, so there'll be more people living in them, but uh, but they'll also kind of look shabby. So you can have areas that were once wealthy and that have become uh, less wealthy areas, and that's really interesting. The 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 kind of sociological demographic aspect of this game I think is stronger than any other city city generator in the sense that you're not just going to be building these these uh, you know this this kind of urban paradise ecological cities you're going to build cities that really have a lot of a lot of texture uh, in terms of uh, in terms of socioeconomics and stuff like that and I, I, that's more realistic if you want to just make a pretty city uh, you can play something like city skyline and it's very interesting but city skyline doesn't really model poverty uh, it, it it in not not nearly a, as detailed as as as, uh, as SimCity 4 anyway. All right, we're still making money, and we've got these two main streets, and maybe maybe we'll just start to expand along these these agricultural main 
main areas. Maybe we can, uh, uh, no, let's just stick to what we're doing here. I'm just kind of gradually eating away at the, uh, at this uh, agricultural area. Extending the grid outward. Forgetting to uh, forgetting to put in my bus stops again. Actually, we could we could also if we keep building the square grid, we could also consider again use, making turning this into sort of a main a main street. I think that's one really, one really interesting way to develop uh, to develop commercially in this game is is to sort of create these main streets, uh, which has the effect of rather than having a commercial zone uh, that where all of your all of your sims kind of leave a, a purely residential area and go into go into a a commercial area to work, sort of like this. Oops, sort of like this industrial area here. We kind of spread the commercial activity across the city, especially early on, um, and that has the effect of keeping keeping our residents relatively close to their jobs, uh, but also uh, creating this kind of mixed use feel that early 20th century cities, basically cities before the car became dominant. What am I doing here? Uh, before the car became dominant, uh, had these sort of mixed use areas where people were living quite close to where they where they work. So I'm going to kind of keep going with that model of development. We need to give these guys bus stops. And at this point I'm going to focus on sort of building these bus stops along these major roads and then provide a few kind of neighborhood stops as well. Uh, and they need water. And I think we're going to be building a new school as well. Take a look at our education. Yeah, let's maybe drop another school here and another clinic, which will probably use up most of our budget. Yeah. Oh, and we're also running out of. We are running out of water, and we're running out of. We're running out of power. So we'll use the same strategy as we did last time. Uh, drop a water station uh, on on the other side of the river so that it's not uh, affected by that pollution. And over here, look at this capacity. We've pretty much used all that up. I'm going to build, you know what, let's go with an oil power plant, which is really going to drive the cost of our power up. But, oh, we are running out of trash capacity as well, so that's something to keep in mind. Yeah, so that's actually pushed us over our budget, and hopefully... Hopefully, when the zone builds, it will bring us back up to kind of breaking even. We've got a bit of a cash reserve, so I'm trying to kind of test the limits of our budget and how much, how many services we can offer. So we're getting a mix. We're definitely getting a mix of uh, different wealth levels. Yeah. Something else we can do to give our budget a little boost. Let's legalize gambling. Uh, this monthly amount will grow as the population grows, so that might be one way to to kind of help the budget. It will create more crime, 
and we're going to probably have some crime issues soon, sooner rather than later. Let's give these guys a straight shot to work down, the, down these streets. Commercial zone's developing nicely. And we are at the limit of what we can provide in terms of commercial jobs and housing. We definitely need to start thinking about uh, a manufacturing industry. And I think we'll do that next... Uh, I think we'll do that next episode. So what we've done this episode is we have kind of expanded the city outward, both across the river and along these uh, sort of what I'm going to call the kind of main arteries of our city. And I think we're going to keep doing that next episode. And we're also going to figure out a way to kind of provide some more manufacturing industry jobs uh, and continue to increase the education. We also have uh, we have some kind of budgetary constraints on the horizon here because we're even though we have a fairly fairly substantial reserve in cash, we are we are spending more than we make every month. So that's definitely going to be a going concern. But uh, yeah, I think next episode it's going to be time to continue to expand and then also expand the, the industry that we're providing uh, as as a workplace. Uh, so, um, I'll, uh, if you uh, like this video, uh, please uh, like and subscribe, and if not, I'll see you again soon. Ciao.